The purpose of this video is to give you some tricks and hints about extramath.org in case you um, haven't been using it and to show you how to utilize it for our tournament that will be in April. So hopefully you learned something new. If not, maybe you can teach me something new if I didn't know it. So one reason we chose extramath.org is because everybody's already in it. So if you go to sign in, sorry, I am, um, and you go to, you want to sign in through Clever. This is the same thing your students will want to do when you're at school. You sign in through Clever and then you should have your classes. I think it gets populated from PowerSchool. So here are your classes. Your kids can also, if they wanted to do extra math on a different device, you could give them their pin. So you can go to this list of pins over here and then click print. And then this will tell you what their name is and what their pin is. They'll also need your um, you, uh, email. So you could put that in a um, assignment notebook or sticky note in a folder or something. So if they wanted to log in and they didn't have their Chromebooks anymore, they could use uh, their name over here, your email, and this pin number. So now that we're in here, a couple of things that are cool. One thing that we would like for everybody to do is to print a report. So if you go to print class report and then you click on include student in the report. Um, not sure what that one is, but sure, why not? And then you click print and you wait patiently. It will come up with your report. This is for you to kind of know which operation everybody's in and what percentage of that operation they have learned. There is a formula that they use that they weight the facts differently, zeros and ones, things of that nature are not as uh, weighted highly as the eights and the nines. And then this is the percentage of the facts that they have completed. Then the report we like down here, is for the parents. They can see when the student has um, practiced their facts. They can tell how well they did on their facts. There is a key down here at the bottom. This is a graph that again shows their progress as they go across, if they're increasing, if they're all over the board, if they're focused. Here is the key for what those dots mean. Here is an also a um, graph that shows which facts they're working on and then they a key again down here to kind of see which ones they're focusing on, which ones they haven't attempted yet, which ones um, they are not reliable at answering yet. So then quick print of that and you can, so it looks like the expanded version gave me all of their um, operations, division, multiplication, etc. So this one's addition. So I probably wouldn't click that one. I would probably just do the one that they are working on currently. So that's why we would like you to get everybody on and go ahead and take the test so that they have an idea of where they're starting from. And we have an idea as of March 1st where they're starting from. And then April, do it again and we can see how they've grown and which ones they have accomplished. Some other things to um, think about is class settings. That's just your name. That's not what I wanted. Changing programs. If you go here, this is a quick way that you can click certain kids to change them in a certain program. So um, these students here, I had clicked through, they had already completed the normal multiplication and division subtest, but I was able to click on certain kids and then come here and I can do a custom program for them. So that helps me. I can have them do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I could focus just on multiplication and division or individually, uh, whichever operation I wanted them on. So if I click multiplication, then I was able to do the expanded, which takes them um, past or adds their 11s and 12s facts to them. And I could change their 
amount of time here. So you might have some students that need a little extra time to have success. You could go through and click those kids that uh, need some extra time and give them six seconds to complete it. Your kids that are super fast and you want them to challenge, you could get them at 1.5 or the default is three seconds. So I thought that was a nice easy way to kind of differentiate and kind of offer some options there. If you go into each individual student's items here, uh, and go into their student settings. The, you also have some other options. It'll talk about the programs here as well. So beginning edition is a default program for kindergarten. It's addition involving sums up to 10. Then we have beginning addition and subtraction, which is for first grade. It's addition involving sums up to 10 and then the subtraction problems that go with them. This addition and subtraction program is for second grade. Practice one operation at a time until mastery, and then it moves them automatically on to the next operation. Same thing here for third grade, moves them on to multiplication. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division is for fourth grade, or you could go to this specific one that you're working on in class or that you want to um, focus. I know second grade for second Second semester is focusing on subtraction. Third grade, I believe, is working on their multiplication facts. Um, so they could just go immediately to multiplication instead of going through all of the programs there. The other thing that I thought is nice is for some of those kids that you know um, get anxious or the timer freaks them out, you have the option of hiding the timer during their student activities and um, hiding the teacher during student activity if that's something that they say is bothering them. Now just a little bit about the tournament that will be in April. What we were thinking is each day every class would get on and uh, complete an extra math lesson and then you would just go to your class report. You don't have to print it necessarily but this is just an easy way to look at it or it was right there on that um, opening screen. And so for Tuesday what I would do is I would go through and I would count how many green dots I had. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I had ten green dots and then I would count out of the total amount of kids that took the test that day. So I had ten kids that are green. So then here's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I had 10 out of 20, my percentage would be 50%. So you will get a form that'll ask how many students got a green dot. I would type in 10, how many students did extra math that day. In this case, it was 20. And I would plug that in and then send in the form, which we will calculate to see who had a better percentage out of the kids that did extra math that day to move you on in the tournament. Hopefully that helps with a couple of helpful reports and ways to set up the uh, programs that you can utilize extra math to help us get those basic facts down. Any questions? Let us know.